Friends, we know that 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by just one thing, and that is water. However, 96.5% of this water is found in oceans, and due to its saline nature, most of it cannot be used for various activities. The surprising fact is that of the 8.2 billion humans and countless other living beings on this planet, only 3% of the water is freshwater, and of that, only 0.5% is available for use. Furthermore, a large portion of this usable water comes from rivers. This means it wouldn't be wrong to say that without rivers, human civilization might never have developed. Perhaps that's why ancient cities were settled along rivers, and in modern times, industrial cities are also established near rivers. However, as human civilization continues to develop, so does the damage to nature, and this damage has also affected rivers. On one hand, rivers are drying up due to climate change, and on the other hand, their pollution levels are spiking. That's why the time has come for the world to focus on alternative sources of water, and among these alternatives, the largest source is ocean water, which we cannot use directly due to its salinity, but with the proper use of technology. Even this saline water can be converted into fresh water, making it usable. While most parts of the world currently have sources like rivers and groundwater, if you look at Middle Eastern countries like Saudi Arabia and the UAE, they have no major freshwater sources. Additionally, their geography and climate don't offer any reliable alternative sources of water. Among these, Saudi Arabia, one of the most water-scarce countries in the world, meets its water needs through ocean desalination, which is an extremely expensive process in itself. However, Saudi Arabia wants to change this situation, for which it has planned a next-level project to create the world's longest artificial river with a total length of over 12,000 kilometers, making it the largest source of drinkable water in the world. To give you an idea of the grand scale of this river, its length would be twice that of the world's currently longest river, the Nile. So in today's video, we will learn more about this ambitious project of Saudi Arabia and understand why Saudi Arabia needs such a project. Is it really possible to create such a massive river? Or will this project also turn out to be a financial blunder, like Saudi's The Line project, which was hastily started but is still missing all its deadlines due to economic and technological challenges? So, without further delay, let's start and first understand the reasons why Saudi Arabia wants to build this project. Saudi Arabia's Longest Artificial River Project – An Overview Saudi Arabia is planning to construct the longest artificial river, named the King Salman Water Conveyance Project. The estimated total cost of this project is around $500 million. However, considering inflation, project duration, and market fluctuations, the cost might rise to around $700 to $800 million. The project involves creating an extensive underground pipeline network to make barren land fertile. This underground pipeline network is so massive that if all the pipes were connected end-to-end, -end, they could circle the globe multiple times. The artificial rivers, or more accurately, the pipeline system, will use desalination techniques to convert ocean water from the Red Sea into drinkable water, fulfilling Saudi Arabia's needs. However, desalinating ocean water is an expensive process. For instance, desalinating one cubic meter of water costs about $1.5. However, Saudi Arabia manages to do it for just half a dollar due to the availability of cheap solar and fossil fuel energy. Even so, for Saudi Arabia, desalinating water from the Red Sea on such a large scale is not easy, especially given that the country plans to convert 9.4 million cubic meters of water into fresh water daily. This will cost Saudi Arabia approximately four to $5 million every day. Why is Saudi Arabia executing such a cost-intensive plan? Saudi Arabia is a desert country located in the Middle East, characterized by an arid climate with very little rainfall. Despite being a tropical country, Saudi Arabia experiences extremely high temperatures and low humidity. These conditions prevent the formation of large clouds, leading to low rainfall. Moreover, a permanent subtropical high-pressure system further intensifies these low rainfall conditions, acting as a barrier that prevents moisture-laden air from entering the region. In addition to low rainfall, the surface temperatures of the Arabian Sea and the northern Indian Ocean are relatively low, resulting in a lack of moisture for rain. Climate change, global warming, and phenomena like El Nino have also altered the water pattern in this region, further reducing rainfall. The lack of rain, combined with other factors, makes Saudi Arabia extremely dry. Additionally, the limited water sources in Saudi Arabia evaporate rapidly due to high temperatures, and the country lacks any permanent rivers or water bodies. 
groundwater is also depleting rapidly. A report indicates that groundwater levels in central Saudi Arabia have been declining for decades due to extensive extraction for agriculture, which consumes about 80% of the country's water. Overuse, climate change and other factors have led to the depletion of these sources. For example, Saudi Arabia used to produce significant amounts of wheat until 1990, but by 2016, wheat production had almost stopped due to water scarcity. Similarly, before the year 2000, there was no tax on water and it was provided free of cost to the people. However, due to the rapidly changing situation, the government has now imposed charges on water usage. Presently, Saudi Arabia is one of the world's most water-scarce countries, with only 89,500 litres of water available per person annually, compared to the global average of 500,000 litres. Despite these multiple challenges, Saudi Arabia effectively manages its water resources, ensuring that 97% of the population still has access to safe drinking water. Do you know how this project will actually work? What will this project do, friends? First of all, this project will require desalination plants that will convert the salty seawater into fresh water. Friends, these plants will generally use two processes for desalination. The first is distillation. In this process, seawater is simply boiled, and due to the boiling, the water evaporates and converts into steam. After collecting the steam, it is condensed, which separates the fresh water from the salt. However, this desalination process is not very energy efficient because a lot of energy is required to boil the water. This is where the second process, called reverse osmosis, comes into play. Friends, in this process, a semi-permeable membrane is used, which is ultra-thin. It separates water and salt from the water effectively, and this method is quite efficient because it uses the least energy. After desalination, a vast network of underground pipelines will be laid across Saudi Arabia. These pipelines will be 11 metres wide, 4 metres deep, and will have a diameter of 2.25 metres. Once this underground pipeline is laid throughout the country, its total length will be over 12,000 kilometres. For comparison, the length of the world's longest river, the Nile, is almost half of this. These pipelines will transport fresh water from the plants to people across the country, which will be enough to quench Saudi Arabia's thirst. But is Saudi Arabia running such a massive project just to provide people with safe drinking water? No friends. According to experts, after the completion of this project, its impact will also be felt on the rapidly emerging new sectors in Saudi Arabia. And as we all know, Saudi Arabia is rapidly trying to make its economy oil-free. And for that, it is working on such initiatives. However, Saudi Arabia knows that if it wants to properly transform its economy, it will also need massive water sources in addition to energy. For example, if Saudi Arabia wants to develop a futuristic city in the middle of the desert, it will also have to fulfill the water requirements of the 30 million people and business houses that will settle there. Speaking of social impacts, thousands of jobs will be created during the construction of this project, and a large workforce will be required for its operation as well. This means that this project will create employment opportunities, which will ultimately contribute to Saudi Arabia's economic development and support the local community. 